What's up YouTube? Have you ever wondered why iteration is a critical process in design? Well, that's what we're here to talk about today. Welcome back, my name is Ben Nielsen. I'm a media design educator, and you know we've been going through this series on the most difficult concepts for new designers. And last week, we talked all about sketching, which is the most important design skill. But this week, we're here to talk about another really critical design skill, and that is iteration. Iteration is the process by which we make multiple versions of our design and then compare them against each other to determine which direction we want to go with our final design. Now, this is closely related to sketching, as last time we talked about making lots of different versions of sketches. But iteration happens when we've determined from our sketch is which ideas we want to move forward with so that we can compare them. And then we'll make multiple versions of each of those ideas. Where sketching can happen very quickly, iteration can still happen quite quickly once the design is kind of created and then we can just adjust parameters on it. But it's not as fast as sketching, which is why we want to really get our ideas out during sketching and not be trying to do that process in iteration. Now, that being said, at any point in the design process, if you have a new idea come out, you can always return to sketching. Just grab a sticky note and sketch something out again. Now, a thing to note about iteration is that we can iterate on different concepts. So we can have multiple concepts that are all iterations of a design. And then we can also iterate within each of those concepts by tweaking little things about them. So if you look at this example screenshot here, this is from my course, Designing Logos in Affinity Designer. And you can see that I have three distinct and different concepts that I'm working with and within each of those I've done several iterations. Now not all of these concepts make it as far in the iterations because as you determine that you don't want to move forward with the concept you can stop iterating on it. If this is something that interests you more you can go ahead and check out the link for this course Logo Designs and Affinity Designer in the description below. Now we've been talking about principles of design that cross all types of design disciplines, but of course each design discipline is a little bit different. And in some design disciplines where a product has to ship, like graphic design or film design or product design, you wanna do all of your iterating before that product ships, at least for that version of the product. Now this is different than say, if you're doing something where the product will be happening multiple times, you'll have opportunity to make changes in between the product being experienced. So if you're doing experience design or instructional design or interior design, you should do a lot of iterating before that product ever makes it to a customer, but you can also make changes based on how the customers or the users are interacting with that product. For example, if you were designing an escape room, you would do lots of iterating and testing before customers ever saw that escape room. But also, once customers start using the escape room, you might discover things that you just couldn't know from your iterating and testing before, and you might make tweaks and iterations to the product as it's being shown to the users. For example, in an escape room, you wanna find that balance between difficulty and achievability. And so if you find that that's a little off, you can make tweaks and iterations to that product as it's going. And so that just depends on if your product's going to ship and be out of your hands, or if you're going to maintain some control of that product after it starts being experienced by users. Now, when you're iterating on design, it's important to understand that whatever attributes there are within that design can be changed and iterated on. So some good examples from graphic design of things you can iterate on are things like the colors, lines, the stroke weights, all of those things, the text. Within the text, you can change the font style, the font size, the font decoration. There's a lot of different small things that you can tweak and iterate on to arrive at your final design. In fact, there are so many that I couldn't possibly list them all here for even one design discipline. Here is a small example from my course, Isometric Design in a Fain Designer. You can see here that I have three different iterations of this castle using different colors. And also there's some adjustments to the actual elements of the design as well. And then I can compare each of these together to decide which one I like and which direction I want to head in. If you're interested in this course, you can go ahead and check out the links for it in the description as well. Now, you might be wondering, what are the keys to effective iteration? And there's really three of them that I've come up with. First, you want to save your iterations. Second, you want to iterate quickly. And third, you want to receive feedback on your iterations rather than receiving feedback on your final design. Now we're gonna talk about feedback a whole bunch in a couple of weeks, so I'm not going to go into that a lot right here. And we've also talked about really being fast in your designs when we talked about sketching. But for now, I really wanna zero in on this idea of saving your iterations, because this is one thing that new designers struggle with so, so much. And the reason that I see them struggle with saving their iterations is because they view anything that is not the final product as a failure. Even if they are iterating, they don't wanna be reminded that they failed before. 
and so they just delete their iterations or they make the mistake of modifying just one version over and over again. And the problem with this is that they can't compare. They can't make progress on the design because they can't compare. So you really need to be saving your iterations because that comparison is really important. It's also really useful when you go to receive feedback if you can provide multiple examples and options for the person giving feedback to you. It's really easy to save your iterations if you're working on a visual program like Adobe Illustrator or Affinity Designer. All you have to do is select over all of the objects in your design, hold down option on the keyboard, and then click and drag, and you'll make a new version of that exact same design. Then you can make your changes to your copy and then you can look back at the old one and see it. So for example, let's say that you were trying out a new color palette and you started with an earth tone color palette and now you want to change to a pastel color palette. Well, if you don't save that iteration of the earth tone color palette, you then have nothing to compare the pastel color palette to. So you can't determine which one you actually like better without relying on human memory, which is incredibly flawed. So you really want to save those iterations. In fact, by the end of your design, the artboard and the area around the artboard should just be lit with different iterations. Now, of course, that's an example from graphic design and in other design disciplines, you're going to have to take a different approach to it. So for example, in video design, I'll often use different adjustment layers so that I can turn those off and on and see how they're affecting it. This is especially true with something like effects or color. Now with something like interior design, you're going to actually want to make sure that you are taking photos of the design so that you can go back and compare them because you might not be able to remember exactly how it looked when you had that table here and that lamp here. You want to really think about how you are going to preserve those iterations so that you can compare them later. And then with something like experience design, you're going to want to really take meticulous notes or even video people experiencing the experience so that you can go back and see, okay, when we had this object this way, people moved in these directions. And when we placed it over here, they moved in these directions, right? And so you're really thinking through how the experience is happening and you need to have something to go back to and see it. And it's not as simple as it is in graphic design where you can just keep a copy. So you got to think through how will I save this iteration so that I can compare these two things. But really, if you take anything away from this video, it should be that you should just have lots of iterations. Iterations, especially in things like graphic design, are really cheap to create. And so you might as well do them because they're going to help you arrive at that final design. What new designers don't understand and why they're always trying to get rid of their iterations, that iteration is the process by which they will arrive at the final design. It isn't something to just be gotten through or gotten rid of. It is the very process of design itself. Okay, that's going to do it for us today. I hope you've learned something about iterating in design here. And I would love to hear your experiences with iteration down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. We'll chat in the comments and I will see you in the next video.